Hey there everyone, this is Danielle checking out Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. This game is from the same developers as Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, uh, which I already played on this channel a while back. Uh, that game was a Metroidvania. This game is not a Metroidvania. This is inspired by... Uh, basically, um, Metroidvania comes from Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which I think was roughly the fifth Castlevania game to come out. Uh, and... Before that, there were, like, other Castlevania games, and they were more linear action platformers rather than open world, get upgrades to access new areas platformers. So, uh, Curse of the Moon, unlike Ritual of the Night, is following that older style of Castlevania game. That's my understanding, anyway. Uh, I haven't played it, um, but I really, really, really love Ritual of the Night, so I'm hoping I'll love this too. Uh, let's give it a peek and see what we think. It was, um, at a fairly steep discount, so, you know, I figured I may as well grab it. The game will now perform its initial setup. Uh, yep, it's doing it. Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, version 1.1. Press any button. You can see it, it looks pretty much like a, an NES or SNES game on the title screen here. They're going for a very retro aesthetic. Um, Ritual of the Night was a lot more modern in the way it looked. So, it's interesting that they have taken a bit of a different tack here. Let's look at the options. Uh, we can change the language. We have Japanese and English. HD rumble, we can turn it off and leave it on. Button config. Uh, I can remap the buttons. I don't know what they all do yet. You can see there's some empty spots, so I guess we'll find out. Game start. Uh, we've got a bunch of save slots. Uh... I assume there are harder modes once I've beaten the game once. We'll start with normal. Uh... Easy going, style lives are unlimited, and taking damage will not knock back the player. There is no penalty for selecting this style. Okay, that's good. Um, I imagine Veteran's probably a bit hard for me. Um, I haven't played the original Castlevanias, um, so I might go with Casual. Uh, we'll see how we go. If I think it's a little too easy, maybe I'll play on Veteran. I don't know. There was once a man who had been given the Moon's Curse by demons. This man was Zangetsu. Sorry, that man was Zangetsu. Wrapped in crimson garb with eyes like fire, he relentlessly pursued the demons who cursed him. As he journeyed from one pit of darkness to another, he would stop at nothing until he struck down every last demon in his path. Uh, so Zangetsu is a character in Ritual of the Night. You don't play as him, uh, but you do interact with him, he's one of the bosses you get, and he helps you out afterwards. One night, he sensed the looming presence of a great demon. He swore to eradicate all demons, no matter how much of a threat they posed. Bathed in moonlight, he cried out as he drew his sword, which consumed the darkness from within its wretched steel. This is some intense writing. On that night, either the demons or the moon itself would feel the wrath of his blade. My goodness. Let's do this. Can I speed this up? Or... Oh, I can. I can, pr I can. If I press A, it goes faster. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got some fog here. Okay, so yeah, we're going through a very retro art style here. Uh, I think NES Castlevanias may have looked like this. Moonlight Temptation. I, I haven't played them, as I mentioned, so I'm not totally sure, but... Okay, B button is jump. A button does nothing. Uh, that was the X button to let me do a little whippy thing, but it looks like I have limited amounts of that. And Y button is my regular attack. Uh, I can move with the D-pad or with the analog stick. The analog stick doesn't seem necessary because it's not analog motion. Shoulder buttons don't do anything. Okay, so I can probably recharge my weapon to grabbing these. Yeah, it looks like it. And that's some money. 
Ooh, power like scrolling. That's fancy. Oh no, stairs. I've heard horror stories about stairs in old Castlevania games. We'll see how this goes. Do I want to go up or down? It's like a map or something? Uh, I just pressed plus. Um, activate Curse of the Moon. What does that do? No idea. Um... Well, let's try going to the top area and see what's up there. Okay, you just press up to use the stairs, it's very easy. Like, even if you're standing here... here-ish? Uh, okay, you don't have to be exactly on the stairs, you have to be close to them though. But you press up and you automatically walk over to them and go up. It's not too tricky. I think in the old games you had to align yourself perfectly. Oh, there's actually nothing up here. Okay, I thought I could go that way. Doesn't look like I can. Down we go. Can I like slide under there or... Maybe I can get more abilities. I don't know if I'm really expecting to get more stuff as we progress because, again, this isn't a Metroidvania so it might not have the same sort of upgrades. It's like a little slope there. Oh, it's just a... Just a um, Spiderweb. <laughs> Forgot what those were called for a second there. Oh, uh, my X button changed to something else. It's like a uh, flame spell now. Not sure why that happened. Am I getting money or... Well, are the little bags bags of money? I don't know. I found a big heart. Uh, this, this skeleton here is saying to go that way. It seems I can use sub-weapons with the X button, however that would require weapon points. If I destroy lamps, perhaps I can find a magic potion to restore my weapon points. I also understand that different coloured lamps contain various sub-weapons I can use. Even so, I remain devoted to the sword. Okay, so now I have like a chain. Can I switch between sub-weapons or do they replace each other? Hmm. I don't seem to have a button to switch sub-weapons yet. Maybe maybe I'll learn later, or maybe I just can't. I don't know. It said something about switching in the um, control mapping screen, but I forget what. <laughs> ah! Okay, chandelier's full. Uh, watch out for that. I guess that makes sense, because this is a video game, and chandeliers were made to fall on people. That's why they're, people make them, so they can fall on someone. Or be swung on, I guess. Can I go in there? It looks like there's like a, a narrow passage there that maybe I can get through, but I don't fit. Maybe I'll, maybe this is a bit more Metroidvania or even than I was expecting, and like there's like an upgrade that lets you do that. Okay, now I have the scroll again. Scroll, yeah, let's just ride a little fireball. It's pretty good. Oh, you go down here. Do, 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 do. Oh, is that a, like a boss, or...? I guess so. <laughs> Welp. Uh, can I go this way? I can see there's another skull face. Yeah, I guess I gotta go this way.
Okay, maybe we're about to get to the actual boss, and that was like a boss guardian or something. Because give me a whole bunch of upgrades and things. Yeah, that looks like a boss. My goodness. Okay, I think I want to stay here and just do this for a little bit. I don't know how much health the boss has. It doesn't have, like, a health bar. Even though that would be helpful. Oh, I guess I won. Or maybe it's phase two? I don't know. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think I win? Oh, I got healed. That's probably good. Oh, I'm doing a little pose with my sword. Alright. Oh, you're a person. Hello. Thank you for saving me. Was it the demon's power you used to seal that beast? You... you're a shard binder. That power can summon forth demons at will. I cannot allow that. Wait, it is true that I am a shard binder. However, I have sworn to be ever righteous in my command of this power. Oh, it's, is it... are you Miriam? It's kind of hard to tell with the art style, but you sound like Miriam. I refuse to be used for evil. Then show me the proof of that determination in battle. Miriam, yeah. It is Miriam. Nice. Has become an ally. Yay! She's my friend now. What's this say? With new allies, it appears I can use the LR buttons to switch places with them. No one is without strengths and weaknesses. If I make good use of my allies, I can traverse seemingly impassable terrain. Whenever I reach a crossroad, they'll take the shortest path without fail. If I come to a fork in the path where I can't determine the shortcut, I'll follow the remains of fallen adventurers to lead me in the right direction. Each of my allies has their own stamina. If the health gets low, quickly switching places would be a wise idea. Each type of sub-weapon that appears when destroying lamps can only be used by a certain person, it seems. No one else can even pick them up. Okay, so now I can be Miriam. Let's go! Oh, I just read this. Du -du -du -du. Whip smash, Y button, high jump, V button, slide. Oh, she has sliding, right. She, because, yeah, she does have that in the in the other game. And she jumps high by the looks of things. So, yeah, Miriam just seems to be a better character. I'm guessing she's not as good at combat or something. Okay, so we did that first area. We're now doing the second area. Yeah, I couldn't interact with that. I think that was basically just a cutscene to let me know that I'm at stage two, Frigid Hell. Yeah, my attack has more range as well. I, I think Miriam is just a better character. She's also cuter, which is a bonus. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, Zangetsu has an extra life blip if you look in the top left corner. You can see he has one more life blip than she does. I don't know how much that matters, given that she can hit things from a distance and therefore won't take as much damage in the first place, but, you know. Also, it's a bit tricky to hit some things, like this lamp here, for example. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, I can't jump off the stairs. Okay, I thought I probably could, but I can't. I guess I just listen to the Skeleman when he says where to go. If I go down here, is there like a bonus area or something? Maybe I'm meant to be getting extra lives when I grab certain things, and because I have infinite lives, I don't notice what they do? I don't know. I'm a little confused by this game so far. Oh, this is interesting. Oh dear. Um... What happens when I die? Okay, I respawn at the side of the room. And I can't switch to Miriam anymore. Interesting. Wonder how I get her back. Oops. <laughs> um... Okay, so you would use up your lives to restore everybody, and then you restart the room? Okay. Okay, I see. So it doesn't use a life if one character dies and the other one doesn't, by the looks of things. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's kind of difficult to dodge the... what are those, Dullahammer heads? It's not telling me what enemies are named in this game like it does in uh, Ritual of the Night, which is a bit annoying. I liked that feature. If there's a way to get Miriam back other than just dying, I guess we'll find out. Maybe. Or we'll just die, you know. One or the other. Ah! Oh, oh, I have the scroll. Okay, I was trying to, you know, use the, use the upwards attack thingy, the, the like whip or whatever, but I had the wrong weapon to do that. <laughs> oh my goodness! What the heck is going on here? Leave me alone! Oh my god, this is just chaotic. This would be super hard on veteran, oh my god. <laughs> you just get knocked down all the holes because of the um, enemy knockback. So what does this ability actually do? Does it make me do more damage or something? I think so. I think it's like a, a da damage boost temporarily while you're on fire or something like that. It is impossible to use that thing properly. I am recognizing some of these enemy types from um, Ritual of the Night, which is pretty cool. Because it's the same, you know, universe and the same characters, so... Spotting other stuff that matches up is pretty neat. Uh, okay. Once we need to use the scroll, apparently, which makes sense, because I can just do this. 
Easy peasy. And that means the boss is close, right? At least it did. I don't know if it still does. Can I get in there or do I, do I need Miriam? Because that looks like a good thing. Yeah, I think I need Miriam, and she's not alive, so I can't do it. Uh, that's annoying. battle? Yep. What am I looking at? <laughs> okay, I was supposed to duck, not jump. I don't know your attack patterns. Ah! Goodness. Miriam's back? Yep. Okay. Um Can I backtrack and go get that item that I needed Miriam to get? Looks like yes, but it might need to get past that guy. Damage boost! <laughs> I don't know what I just got. I don't I don't know what that did. Okay. Do 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 Okay, now I have a scythe with my extra weapon. Plenty of weapon juice. Okay, let's try this again. Now we got Miriam though. Okay, that's what my scythe does. I forgot I need to duck. Okay, you can't use your special weapon while ducking. I thought maybe I could and I could do some damage that way, but you can't. So if Miriam dies, do I just keep going with the other guy, or does I, do I immediately lose? I guess we'll find out. Time to duck. Okay, let's switch to the other guy just because, yeah, Miriam was on one health. Um... Do we win? Screen is shaking. Oh! Looks like they all have like a final attack that you need to dodge and then the fight is over. Interesting. Oh, do we have a new friend?
that I would be defeated by a demon. I have been thoroughly humiliated. I am Alfred, an alchemist. Alchemist? You use demons to, to fulfill your worldly desires. Every achievement requires a fair exchange. Even using demons is sometimes necessary. You have your own goals, correct? My power may be of use to even you. Your existence is unsettling to me, but your skills are not without value. I'll leave your head where it is for now. Alfred has become an ally. Sangetsu's kind of a jerk. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. With new allies, it appears I can use... Yeah, I think I've read this already. Yeah, I've read this before. I assume this one will tell me about Alfred's abilities. Buster Rod, Y button. Use Alchemy, X button. Okay. Okay, he jumps a little bit. It's okay. His weapon is very slow. Uh... Miriam is still best, I think. Um, yeah, she jumps the highest. And she has the best range on her weapon, and she's super cute, so... I think she's the best character. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Stage three. The, the Brilliant Void. Alright. Can anyone attack directly upwards? I don't think they can. Miriam's whip is very good. <laughs> there we go, that's how you deal with that guy. There was definitely some stuff in level 1 that I needed Miriam to get to, so I don't know if I can replay the levels with more characters or something. My goodness. Um, oh, I didn't do what I expected. I was thinking that would be how you... Deal with this guy. Um. Nope. I don't know how you're supposed to get through there. Um. Hmm. And I have worse characters. <laughs> Maybe I'm meant to use alchemy. I can try some alchemy when I get back there, which will be shortly. It's interesting because Zangetsu's sword is one of the best weapons in Ritual of the Night. You get it like right near the end and it's really good. Okay, I have- oh, a shield! Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. That's what alchemy does. Alright, I understand. <laughs> Still don't know how I'm gonna get to Miriam, though. I mean, how I'm gonna get Miriam... Miriam's stuff done. Blah. Is there, like, a way to bring back people who have been defeated without everyone else dying? Because, you know, there's three people now. It's gonna take a bit longer for everyone to die. But Miriam could jump up that high. Or is it the idea is Miriam is the best character, but you lose her very easily because, like, someone dies and then you're stuck with the other characters to play the rest of the game? Because, I mean, that would make sense. Because she's amazing. She doesn't do a whole lot of shard binding in this game, though. Like, she doesn't seem to use any of the shard-based abilities that she has in 
Unless that's what all the all the X button abilities are supposed to be, but I mean, Zengetsu has a bunch of those too, and he hates shard binding, so I, I don't know. Let's go up here. Oh no, a mimic! Didn't give me any prizes. Mm, all right. These aren't very good mimics, they're immediately revealing that they're mimics. And they don't, they don't take as much damage as the ones in Ritual of the Night either. Ah oh, hey, it's the floating pig guys. I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> Dangerous. Can I crouch to avoid that, or is it gonna hit me? Okay, now I can crouch. All right. Come at, me, come at me, rats. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a way to bring back characters you've lost. Like, I've hit a whole bunch of different things. Oh, unless that's what does it? What is that? That's something I can't get because I don't have Miriam, so I can't slide. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't slide here either. If I drop here, is that gonna kill me? Nope. Might have done though. Is this the boss room? Is the boss money? Are we fighting capitalism? Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's a fellow with lots of money. I think there's a boss like this in, uh, the other game. Uh, I can't jump high enough to avoid this, because I don't have Miriam. What am I supposed to do? I meant to just come in with Miriam and just be able to do it that way? Um, I'll try going this way instead. No, you can't. You have to go down. That was the correct path. Damn. Um, alright. Well, let's try it again. With just Zangetsu and see what we can do. Seems like respawning with a character missing and therefore their abilities missing doesn't work super well because you might need those abilities. <laughs> hmm. It's the evil money man. Hello money man. And I'm stuck. Oh, you can damage the money! Okay. I get it now. Oh no, hands! Oh god, I'm so slow. Oh! Okay, that's what the hands do.
Take on the hands. Money, money. Oh! Wait, did I bait him? Does hitting the money hurt him? Okay, yeah, this is his, um, Danmaku stage. Huh. I guess I beat money, man, and now I'm in hell. <laughs> this looks horrible. <laughs> I'm guessing there are only four characters based on how much space there is on the screen there. So we're going to get the fourth one now. Cursed Shardbinder, you carry the power of numerous demons. Very perceptive of you. I require the demon's power to achieve my revenge. At this moment, our objectives align. Cooperation will be fruitful for us both. So be it. I'll let you continue breathing for now. Oh, Jeebel, right. Has become an ally. I wonder what his powers are. Uh, summon Darkness and Immortal Metamorphosis. Siphon Blood. Quick Ascend. Okay, so he uses weapon points to become like a super powerful bat form or something. Because he's basically a vampire. And everyone's back again, so I can play as Miriam. Yeah, Miriam has the second most health. I think I think you are supposed to use it for combat. Even though she's also the one who has the most abilities that do useful things. Jibble can fly, so that's probably very useful for getting into secret areas and stuff. Blasphemy unto heaven. So do I get to replay the whole game with all the characters so I can reach everything? Because... Like, there were a bunch of secrets I couldn't get to because of the characters I had. Hey, it's the super dollar hammers. The ones that have the golden heads instead. Forget what they're called. <laughs> kind of wish this game had a tell you what the thing is called pop up, like, um, like a Ritual of the Night does. Whenever you attack something in, in uh, Ritual of the Night, a little pop-up tells you, like, what that monster is. It's very helpful. Come back here. Also kind of funny you jump on top of the HUD like this. Because it sort of makes sense, so you can see where you are as you jump around up high, but it's also a bit silly. So the Fallen Adventure is pointing to the main path, right? So if you go a different way, that's like a sub-area. I think. If I'm understanding correctly. Like a secret path or whatever. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, come on, you can't shoot vertically, that's not allowed. Horizontally or nothing. Okay, yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah, hitting uh, lanterns in certain places is not Miriam's forte.
Okay, yeah, it slowly drains your weapon power when you turn into a bat. That makes sense, I guess. And she will summon darkness power is actually pretty good because it hits upwards. Unlike everything else in the game that I have so far. <laughs> Miriam is still better though, like overall range is the is is the best. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there's a wall there. I see. Okay. I actually need Miriam to get through here, because no one else knows how to slide for some reason. Oops. And now I'm out of Miriam's again. I don't know, maybe this makes more sense if you're playing on the, on the other mode that has you have limited lives, and then, I don't know. It, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me having it work this way. Where you lose a character and then you have to go and get all the others killed if you want them back. Because the characters have special abilities, and I want special abilities. Okay, that's not damaging that guy. Does he have to not be on fire to be damaged or something? Hmm. Hang on, I can just do this, alright? Goodbye. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if that was intentional, but it was pretty funny. These frogs are so unpredictable and hard to see, what the hell? <laughs> like, there's this fence in the way, so I don't know where they are. Hmm. I don't know about this. Go that way. Alright. It's down here. Other stuff. But it's supposed to bat here, or is there something else I can do that I haven't noticed? Hmm. Because, you know, I might not have this guy and then I wouldn't be able to bat. I'm just not supposed to be able to get through if I don't have the right character? I, I don't know. There might have been another route I could take or something. Uh, I do want to get whatever that is, but I don't know if- oh, I can probably just fly up there, right? Yeah, I don't know what it does, but I got it. <laughs> I think it might have boosted my maximum weapon energy. Like, it says 60 now. I think it was lower than that before.
Guessing the boss is coming up because they're giving us lots and lots of lanterns just here. Yep, boss time. I know how video games work. What the heck is that? Oh my god, it's enormous! Ah. Oh, I defeated that head. Do I have to hit the other one now? How do I hit the other one? Can I reach it? Oh yeah, I can go this way. Ah. Is this like a second phase of the boss, or what's happening? <laughs> I guess that was the second phase. And now to do it again without that character? Yeah, I don't know about this design. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's like, hey, this thing that you couldn't do, now do it with more, fewer resources. Hmm. Also, I didn't get any life back. Look how little life I have. <laughs> Seems like the... Like, most efficient thing to do is just to die and then come back with everyone. But I guess if you have limited lives, that's less efficient? I, I don't know. Alchemy man! I want to stand over here, right? Yeah, they get all spiky, and I go over here. And then I die. Hmm. Oh, there's a heart there. Big heart that heals you a lot. Okay, I did not know that was there. I think I forgot. I think I might have known it was there and then I forgot it was there. Okay. <sighs> Here we go again. Rah. 
I think being on fire makes you do more damage, but I'm not sure. Okay, round two. So I want to stand here-ish? <sighs> and then get hit, unavoidably, as far as I can tell. Hmm. Again, okay, then you spend a life to bring everyone back. Seems like I should just give you everyone back when you die, instead of, uh, you know, go through all the other characters and have fewer abilities until you all die. That just, that doesn't quite seem right. Unless I'm misunderstanding something about how this game works. Oh, I need weapon energy. Um... That's not weapon energy. That was weapon energy. I think sometimes enemies drop the stuff, but not always. Okay, that'll do. Let's give it a try. Dragon time! It's dragon time! Okay, Dragon 2. They roar at you for a bit, and then you're allowed to hit them. Yeah, that's what I thought, it hits the hole. I guess you need to stand a little further back? I don't know. So I know they're going to do that once they've... Uh, I don't know how to beat this. Um, I guess I'll grab some more weapon energy and see if I can do it without Ninja Man. <sighs> Love to take some damage. It's my favorite thing. What do the little bags do? Is it just points? Because points don't mean anything. Okay, let's have another look at this. You have a bit more range, which might help us out.
Yeah, it looks like that did help us out. Okay. Uh, here we go. Other half of the boss. Fire. Okay, so Miriam is just the best character. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, there's still the second phase of the boss, which I have no idea what to do with. It's just, just nonsense. But I do have better range anyway, which is probably going to help, so... Ah! This is very repetitive. Ah, slipped. And did we win? Yeah, I think we won. I'm guessing the boss will have some sort of super attack at the end. They usually do. Unless that was it and it's done. Okay. And this is the final area, I suppose? Under the night. Oh, is this the, the boat? The ga Gallia Minerva? Are we on the Gallia Minerva? Yeah, it looks like we are. This looks very similar to the Gallia Minerva anyway. Which is, the, by the way, the first area in Ritual of the Night, so it's interesting that they made it the last area in this game. Maybe this is just like a prequel sort of thing? I'm not quite sure where it fits into the story. Uh, and there weren't any mimics on it in the other game either, but, you know, things can change. Do I want to go up there? I mean, I can. I can use my bat form to fly up there, but I don't know if there's a reason to. Uh, that's a Dalla Hammer. Hang on, I'm gonna turn my volume up just a little bit. Dalla Hammers are much tougher in this game than they were in Ritual of the Night. Because they're like mini bosses here. Let's go, Miriam. Do, do, hop. Go this way? Alright. Uh, there's a gap there. Bad form it is, I guess. Uh, I can't slide through there. I'm gonna need to bat again to get through here. What is that? Oh, okay. Am I supposed to fight it? Doesn't he be taking damage? It doesn't seem like I'm meant to fight it. Let's just go back this way.
Oh, we don't like that. Hmm. I guess it's gonna be faster just to hit him with the axe, but eh, I don't take that much damage anyway. Oh, that's a fancy door. Boss battle, we're finding a painting. Oh, we are finding a painting. Okay. You did fight paintings in the other game, but uh, they weren't really bosses, they were just like minor enemies. Um, what's going on? Wait, did the painting just instantly kill me? That's not fair! Ugh. Don't think I like that. Because, yeah, they could not do that in Ritual of the Night. They, um, just did a little bit of damage, like most enemies. Okay. <sighs> well... Um, I guess I'll keep going this way. Jerk. Uh, I need the bat to go that way, so I'm gonna assume the correct way is this way. How come your axes go through things? My axes don't do that. Why am I being pushed this way? Is it like wind or something? Hmm. It's still happening. Why am I being pushed to the right? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's just embarrassing. Oh my goodness. Um... Okay, yeah, that painting ate Miriam, so I only have these guys now. Alright. Seriously, is there supposed to be some sort of wind effect that I can't see? Is the rain supposed to be indicative of there being wind? I, I can't see anything that looks like that. It's gone now. It just looks like rain to me. Hmm. These guys are a lot more threatening than they are in Ritual of the Night. They're like the weakest enemies in that game. Let me just uh, take this from you, thanks. Okay, we got wind out here again? Yes. I'm not pressing any buttons. <laughs> just drift to the right slowly, for no apparent reason.
Let's play as the alchemist. He's an old guy. Okay, that they only fire once you move towards the right spot. I, I was trying to bait them. It didn't work. And yeah, I can't jump far enough for that gap. Must be missing something. Anyway, if any lives again. Now I can be anyone. Because that's how this game works. It's super weird. I probably want Miriam just because she has the best jump. Makes her probably the best crossing all these gaps and stuff. Also, she's the cutest. <laughs> okay, it's, it's been about an hour. I think I'm going to call it there. So, um, this is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Uh, it's a weird game. Um... I guess I should say what this does before I wrap it up. If you find yourself regarding, regretting a grievous error you committed in the past, the moon's curse can undo the flow of time and give you the chance to begin anew. Oh. Okay, so the moon's curse lets you rewind back to earlier levels. But I think you lose the characters that you got later on, so I'm not sure why that's worth doing. Like, you can see Miriam disappears, which would suggest you can only play as Zengetsu in the first level. And then Alfred disappears, and Jeebel disappears. Yeah, it looks like there's one of those little canister things in each level, so you can rewind to here and find the next one. Uh... Huh. So that's what that does, I guess. If I go exit game, what happens? Any progress you made on the current stage will be lost, but power up items you collected will be saved. Okay. <sighs> Let's up, take a look and see what the save looks like. Player 1, stage 5, lives infinity, mode normal style, casual score, that, time, that. Yeah. Okay, um... So that's, yeah, that's Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. I don't like it as much as Ritual of the Night, which is very much my kind of game. Um, I don't think it's a bad game, I just think it's not my style of game quite so much as, as um, the other one, as Ritual of the Night, which is a Metroidvania, which is totally my jam. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, I'm probably going to get better at it, because I'm not great at it, you may have noticed. Uh, and I still think it's weird that when a character dies, you play on with the other characters and it resets to the beginning of the room because you might have needed that character and then you've got no recourse but to throw everyone else off the bridge as well? I don't know, it's weird. I guess I'll try on veteran mode and see how it works without unlimited lives later. It might make more sense that way. Um, if, I don't know, maybe instead of losing a character permanently, you just lose a life and then the character later on or something. Or vice versa, I don't know. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!